Hey, my friends, what do you say we have a spiritual conversation? You know, I have a list of topics and ideas that I think would be fresh and interesting and engaging to explore on this podcast, and I never refer to them because it seems that I always like get sort of a flash of like, oh, this is the thing I must talk about. So I hope and I pray that what what comes to me in these spiritual light bulbs and feels like very fresh and revelatory to me, that there is at least one of you out there that this message is so completely, totally meant for, and I hope it really helps you. So today's aha, and literally I woke up with it today, was about finding meaning in tests and difficulties and specifically why it is helpful for us to be ready for tests and difficulties and to see them in a spiritual context. First off, as a disclaimer, I would just like to acknowledge that I know that in this state of spiritual but not religious that a lot of society is in, which I think has a lot of healthy components, that the idea of like being spiritually tested or you know finding meaning and difficulties is sometimes a rejected idea in this climate because it's too close to home to some concepts and ideas that have been historically abused in religious practice and circles and dogma that, you know, you are being punished, that you must experience pain to grow closer to God, like these sort of things where it's like, no, 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 like God is loving and, you know, you you don't have to bring on suffering and you know, the universe isn't here to test you sort of ideas. And I I accept and I acknowledge that. And I agree that we should not uh, purposely harm ourselves or others or do any weird thing like that in, in the name of thinking that it's spiritual. And I also don't think, you know, we should wave around our, our sufferings as some virtue flag or anything. But I think we can all acknowledge that suffering is an unavoidable part of life and that as right now we're going through both a collective difficulty and also one that has as many individual expressions as there are individuals alive on this planet right now so suffering and difficulties and trials are going to happen so why not have a spiritual attitude towards them also I believe that we are not so much punished for our actions, rather as we experience the consequences of them. And I'm not saying at all that every difficulty is due to our own actions. Not at all. But sometimes they are. Like if you eat too much chocolate cake, you're not going to be punished for it. You're just going to suffer the cause and effect consequences of having a stomach ache for eating too much cake. And third point, we we have tests in school, right? We have quizzes in school or, you know, whatever discipline we're training in. And the purpose of that is not to punish us. Ooh, that's a good one, right? It's not to punish, you're not getting your, your semester test to punish you, but rather to test what you have learned to test your strength, to test the capacity that you have developed. You started out knowing this much at the beginning of the semester, and now you are being tested on all of the learning and growth that has happened since then. So it is not a punishment. It is a test of where are you now. And... I will share a personal perspective of where this whole train of thought has come from very recently for me. 
in spite of these crazy challenges in the world right now, I'm very grateful that I have experienced recently some real peace and contentment and gratitude at a level deeper than I really remember feeling in the past. This may be because of the slowered lifestyle. It may be the, you know, fortunate wind of my own chemicals and hormones. It could be that we had a lot of gray days and now it's stunningly beautiful. It could be prayer and it's probably all of the above. But interestingly, as I was really trying to sort of lean in to this sense of deep inner gratitude and peace, I felt myself, I felt the stirrings of fear actually, of like wanting to cling to this feeling and hold on to it. Like just hold your mouth right and don't let anything change. And I was even like, you know, God, like help me stay in this like, inner garden of Eden that I have found. But it wasn't like an empowered prayer. It was a fearful. And it's funny because just a few episodes ago, I, I talked about hope and optimism and, and joy being resilient and not at all fragile. But I, I was approaching my gratitude and peace as if it was something very fragile and just keep let this be the status quo and let's just keep it right here and I I noticed that and I was thinking you know if I if I really feel like I've grown if I really feel that I'm in a a new level of this life spiritual video game that we're in then I should be ready for for anything I should be ready for it challenge like hey god i'm feeling really strong right now why don't you bring me some challenges and i was like mm, um no like so not ready to say that prayer and you know there's a quote from the baha'i writings that says the true lover yearneth for tribulation even as doth the rebel for forgiveness and the sinful for mercy yearneth for trouble and I was reflecting on that and I was like gosh yeah no <laughs> I'm so not there I'm so not ready to pray for tests even though that I know that it's intellectually I have read these I understand that you know, that is a very spiritually mature thing to do. But no, I just, mm -mm, I'm not there. No, God, just, you want to leave everything just the way it is, it's fine. It's... So I was aware of this, right? And I, um, and, you know, I understand, like, everything I started this episode, talking that, you know, tests are um, a way to test one's growth and all of this stuff, and I've been thinking about it. And... And, and that I don't want my hope and optimism to be weak and timid and fragile. And last night, I wasn't really reflecting on this specifically last night, but I said the midnight prayer. It's a short prayer from the Baha'i Writings, and I've noticed sometimes when I say it, I have very distinctive dreams. And last night I did, and I will spare you the details because I don't remember the details, but I had this super clear light bulb of understanding, visceral understanding in the dream, that one of the wisdoms in praying for tests and difficulties and trials is that they will inevitably come, right? That is part of this life, they will inevitably come. And when we have prayed for them, we put ourselves in a mindset of readiness. Like we recognize, ah, this is what I have prayed for. 
this opportunity to test my growth, to test the extent of my patience or love or kindness or generosity or faith or hope or integrity or truthfulness, whatever it is. And now I can arise because my, my test is here. My, my test has arrived so I can arise. So it's putting yourself in that state of readiness to be able to catch the ball that's thrown to you by life as opposed to a less developed, shall we say, weaker reaction, which is to feel like a victim. So it puts you in a state of empowerment. You're you know, you are the sportsman. You, you are ready to catch that ball. Knowing that it is an opportunity to become deeper, grow closer to God, test the limits, and develop greater capacities and strengths in all of your virtues. You know... Clarissa Pincoli's SDs, she wrote Women Who Run With the Wolves, which I was exposed to at a very young age, and I'm sure it had a huge influence on me. And she refers to dreams as the riddle mother, and it's based on a, an old poem or fable about the riddle mother comes to us and teaches us what we need to know, but she, she gives us our answers in riddles that we have to decode. So that was my gift from the riddle mother last night. She didn't really give me a lot of decoding. It was pretty straightforward. But um, I'm excited about this, and I hope that it... I hope that this lands with you as well. Instead of holding your breath, hoping that nothing else bad is freaking going to happen, rather to know that it will and that you're going to be okay. You got this. You have spiritual support. You have a loving creator who is training and refining you. You have guardian angels and spiritual, you know, winds and forces that are always surrounding you to help you. You very likely have friends and family who are, and friggin' stranger neighbors. They're, I mean, like, we love each other so deeply if only given the opportunity to arise and help someone, right? And also... You have your badass, amazing self. You are the only person who gets to be you in this lifetime. You are the only person who has had your unique experiences and learning in this life. And when you are tested, it's not a bad thing. It's an opportunity to either shine or fall on your knees and say, God, universe, source, I need some help. And both are great options. And I think neither is victim. Victim is when you're like, oh, why me? Life is so unfair. Why does this, you know, always happen to me? It's like, okay, I'm going to respond one of these elevated ways. So those are some thoughts. Please let me know, even if you wildly disagree with me. I would love to hear your thoughts. So send in your voice memos or comments or send me a message because I do truly want these to be spiritual conversations. If you are interested in taking art lessons with me, I have opened the Patreon Art Classroom. It is a donation-based subscription class. We are starting in on Project 2. Enroll at any level of membership and you unlock all of the levels. No, that's right. Yes, you unlock all of the content and lessons, and it would be super awesome to be your guide in some art journeys. 
wherever you are, my friends, I wish you all of the best in this spiritual path that we're all on. Love you. Bye-bye.